You're watching Real English with Real Teachers. Real Teachers. Real teachers. Hello and welcome to Real English with Real Teachers. This video is being made uh, to help you to understand the phrases uh, and vocabulary used by our interviewees in London Interviews episode one, talking about plans. Melvin. So Melvin said that he was going to be taking on or to take on some new modeling jobs. Well, I'm about to see a new agent um, to take on uh, some modeling jobs, to take on uh, some modeling jobs, and to take on uh, some modeling jobs. What did he mean by to take on something? To take on a new job? Yeah, so he wanted to accept or, or do a new task or responsibility. So you could say like, uh, I want to take on a new challenge at work. Woolly Cardies. Woolly Cardies is quite British, isn't it? And it's actually slang for Woolly Cardigan. Okay. What, what type of modelling jobs? Oh, well, who knows? I suspect it might be Woolly Cardies. I suspect it might be Woolly Cardies. What, what do we mean by Woolly, firstly? Okay, Woolly is the adjective of wool. Wool is the coat of a sheep or a goat or even another similar animal that has that kind of texture so that's what wool is and cardigan is a form of another kind of jumper or a, a top with a fastening normally yeah 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 so it's like an open jumper on to uh, the distinguished gentleman that is harry and melvin uh, Melvin was the slightly older distinguished gentleman. Uh, anything that would suit me? Um, well, I, I can see clearly that you are uh, a distinguished gentleman, but perhaps not an older distinguished gentleman such as myself. A distinguished gentleman is maybe a, a successful person who uh, demands the, the respect or deserves the respect of other people. And then the last one we caught was to suit you or to suit someone okay anything that would suit me it means does it go well with you does it complement your style yeah exactly yeah does it look good on you so he said that his mitch schnauzers take after their father mm. uh, their father being melvin well, clearly they take after their father <laughs> what does that mean to take after somebody uh suppose it means to adopt the characteristics and actually be like that person. Uh, to be remiss they have a similar of, beard. of me or to be remiss of someone. I was just thinking the other day that this is really remiss of me not having anything planned for the autumn. To not do something that you should have done already. Oh, uh, well, it was remiss of me to not flush the toilet. Uh, for, for my dear girlfriend last night. <laughs> James and Katie. So I, I like the way Charlie started this one up. This one up. He started, he started with the question, what are you up to today? Or what are you up to? Mm, what are you up to today? Probably more common than what are you doing today? Yeah, okay, okay. So to be a native, say that. What are you up to? What are you up to? It went on to James saying how he would check out something. Uh, probably go down to Camden, uh, check out some of South Bank, you know. Uh, uh, check out some of South Bank. And that literally means to, to observe, to come and see what's happening. Right? Yeah, not normally for the first time, isn't it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Like, yeah. we could say, oh, check out our new video. Yes, yes. Yeah. You could also check out a woman, though, if we're going back to the womanizing. Yeah, okay. Oh, check her out. Yeah, again, that would be the first time, wouldn't it? Probably. Yeah. Um, and just bum around London, I suppose. Bum around suggests a bit of a, a lazy term and yeah. not the most productive. No, yeah. There was no particular plan um, and he, he had no rush to, to be anywhere. He's just going to bum around. 
bum around, do whatever. Um, no hard and fast plans yet, but we'll see, we'll see where it takes us. No hard and fast plans. So they have nothing in the, in the diary. There's no specific organized event. So they'll just see what happens. Yeah, just bum around and see what happens. So then Charlie asked, um, what are you doing for Christmas? Um, and the reason that I want to talk about this is because it's really useful and it's very native to use the present continuous when talking about fixed plans in the future. Um, for example, in uh, two weeks, I am going to Seville in Spain. Uh, next one was to pop over. So they wanted to pop over to Camden. Or no, to pop over to Disneyland. Have you got any plans for Christmas? Um, not yet, probably. I've got uni, so do that. Um, might pop over to Disneyland. Um, might pop over to Disneyland. Yeah, pop over to Disney World, which would, see, or land, which would seem strange because um, popping over suggests a very short, quick visit that's uh, not really a big deal. <laughs> yeah, pop but over. to go to Disneyland for me would be a big deal. Um, so it suggests maybe that they've they've done this already, that they like Disney World or Disneyland, and that yeah, I'll just pop over to Disneyland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It is. Yeah, it does suggest that it requires minimal effort. Yeah, it? yeah. I'll pop over. I'm popping to the shop. I asked whereabouts in Italy. Whereabouts in Italy? Uh, Verona. Mm. So just a, an easy way to ask a location. Whereabouts? Yeah. Yeah. I live in Germany. Ah, oh, whereabouts? Adam and Ryan. I think the other question was, do you have any plans for, today, for Christmas? He said, nah. And uh, towards Christmas, have you got any plans for that, uh, for that month? Uh, no, not at the moment. I'm not really a big Christmas person, so no plans at the moment. Um, no. Um, no. Okay. Yeah. Nah. Nah. Do you like Christmas? Nah. <laughs> yeah, have you got any plans for Christmas? Nah. And then he said, I'm not really a big Christmas person. Yeah. So nah is a really common way to say no, isn't it? Like, yeah. especially in the youth would say, nah. Do you want to pop over and have a cup of tea? Nah. Roger. Uh, outside London Eye with me, he said... And to pop into the National Gallery to look at the Caravaggios. He intended to pop in to see the Caravaggios. Yeah. Meaning the Caravaggio paintings. Very popular in uh, British English. Yeah. Then unanimously voted. This is quite a posh phrase. Um, I was um, unanimously voted worst karaoke singer of the night. Unanimously voted. Mm. Meaning? Uh, meaning everyone at the place voted for him to be the worst singer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not one single person said he wasn't. Behave yourself or I'll sing it again. Mm. Oh. Fantastic. What song was it? Um, raindrops keep falling on my head and behave yourself or I'll sing it again. <laughs> meaning that I've got to be good. Otherwise, something bad will happen. Yeah, yeah. And he used it, and it's often used in a sarcastic, uh, jokey way. Um, he was saying, oh, behave yourself, as an imperative, behave yourself, or I will sing it again. Mm. I'm the worst singer. Unanimously voted the worst singer. You don't want me to sing it again. Yeah. Be good, or I'll do something bad. A detective play is a... Who done it? Play. But the, we have a huge variety. There'll be tragedies and dramas and who done it's and comedies and who done it's. We, if we were acting Sherlock Holmes, that would be a who done it play. And I suppose that's come from who has done this or who has done that. So um, it would be rude not to was another nice phrase that he said. Oh, that sounds lovely. Bordeaux, a lot of wine. Uh, well, it would be rude not to drink it when you're there, wouldn't it? It'd be unfair to the Bordeaux people. It would be rude not to. Yeah. Yeah. Bordeaux being the capital of wine, I suppose. Um, it would be rude not to. It would be bad behaviour to not drink wine in the capital of the 
the wine region. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So that was all of the phrases that we thought were very useful for you. We hope that you learnt them. Uh, make sure that you actually uh, start using them before you lose them. We've got another episode of the London interviews coming shortly. So uh, stay tuned and uh, this little... Yeah, give us a thumbs up and write a comment. Practice the phrases in the comments below and we will correct you um, if they're not used correctly. Exactly. All right. We hope to hear from you soon and uh, get in touch. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.